This is passion flower. The um, growing here in a raised bed with the other uh, medicinal herbs and food. In fact, um, there's a good, there's an interesting story here because last year I was looking all over the property to find passion flower and I knew it grew in two different places here and uh, I was collecting the passion flower um, the leaves you know I say passion flower just because it's the generic name of the plant collecting the leaves here because um, they're um, they're known or at least you know it is said that they are uh, that they help to calm, to calm down, to calm uh, the nervous system. It's like, it's a good tea to make if you want to help uh, to sleep better. Or Here's the flower, look at this. I'm sure, uh, this one is not in a perfect state. It's getting older and it's uh, shriveling up, but they make these amazing, amazing flowers. I mean, and they have a very uh, particular smell. I don't know how to describe the smell. Uh, huh. I don't know, a bit skunky. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say like the, not like petroleum, like gasoline, but like a skunky gasoline type. Like kind of like the lantana, if, you, if you've ever smelled the lantana plant. So anyways, this, the, these passion flowers are all growing here in the, quote, garden. And they volunteered, and they're volunteering everywhere. Okay, they're just coming up from the ground, like that, like this, absolutely everywhere. And I'm letting, see the thing is like, before I uh, started to garden like this here, to do the sacred gardening, I would have wanted to dominate this uh, raised bed and impose uh, my will and have carrots or, or whatever, tomatoes, and, and grow that. But now I recognize these amazing plants, and when I do, I let them uh, do what they want because they're, uh, they're healing, they're... they're uh, they're amazing plants, uh, these, quote, weeds. <laughs> now, what's, what's fascinating is that I was looking for them. I wanted them to be, to be present, more present in my, uh, in my life. And, and it's just like, I don't know, almost like, say pure magic or something. They just started to grow in this garden bed. They've taken over half of the bed, and I'm just gonna let them go, and they're happy. They, and they're just gonna be here like from from now on, probably ever. <laughs> so it's a case of like mm, manifesting these passion flowers, I guess, and then uh, being able to recognize their their uh, presence and and letting them thrive. So now, I'm going to harvest some um, like I would any other wild medicinal herb with respect and uh, intention. But it's great, they're here. It's like, it just goes to show that I've, I'm learning, I just keep learning, I just keep remembering how to, uh, to be in a relationship with uh, nature, with the herbs with food, what we call food. Here's another interesting uh, plant here. Let me see if I could uh, take a close zoom up here. Okay. It's still very small. You see that? Here's another one right here. They get big. They get like maybe a foot or or two feet high like by a by two feet wide, it's a little mini bush, you know, 
and they they make seeds underneath you see this here the seeds now these are called uh, chamber bitter and um, they are uh, they are also an amazing healing plant um, and um, I'm not going to uh, to list make a list of all the things that they say that uh, chamber bitter does but let me just say that this in China and other uh, Asian countries they um, they sell this here in pharmacies in what the, in whatever version of their herb herbal medicine pharmacies to help for diabetes and for cancer okay this is like and they study this in their universities it's a it's like a cure for cancer but um, of course here like uh, God forbid anybody says anything about you know something to alleviate cancer <laughs> it's way too lucrative to not find a cure <laughs> so anyways there's look it up chamber bitter and then the passion flower well I know again my purpose here is not to uh, copy paste things from a book and tell you exactly what other people are saying I'm just relating my little stories and whatever direct experiences that I have with these plants and uh, as far as it has it really calmed uh, me down when I have a tea so far I can't say no I haven't I guess I haven't had enough you know to say that it has but um and I'm not saying that it doesn't right I have a friend here uh, that used to live in Mississippi but is now moved and um, without telling the, her uh, entire story she had a, a very powerful spiritual emotional and physical transformation in her life and um, it was obviously for the better <laughs> and it was due to this plant okay passion flower now so she has a direct experience of have the power the amazing healing power of this plant so that's what I'm looking for is direct experience copy pasting things from a book this is just not something that we that that you guys need uh, from me okay first of all uh, this we're in um, the south of Mississippi so by uh, showing you this here and, uh, and showing you what they look like when they're small and all well maybe it'll help people from around here find them in their garden which is just the first step <laughs> uh, recognizing their uh, existence and then the second step is doing your own research to see what what value besides for building a relationship with creation uh, what value it might have for you and then um, and then third it would be the direct experience that you could gain from for yourself okay doesn't matter what people say what do you get from it when you build a relationship so there you go passion flower and bitter chamber chamber bitter sorry um, They'll get bigger. I'll, I'll probably make an, a better video on on them uh, as they get bigger. <laughs> okay. Take care.